So, do you have any tips or tricks for night filming? Having been an electrician in your past? I tend to use backlight, it tends to be my go-to. It always looks good, it's always about separation. And night is always naturally about the darkness. One of the easiest ways to achieve that is backlight. It depends what the scene is, naturally. I tend to look at what's there and augment what's there. If you've got lamp posts, then you know, it gives you a starting point. One thing I am very, very, very obsessive over is street lights. It, just because there's illumination there, it doesn't mean that the light's in the right place. I obsessively speak to the location department and say, I want all of that turned off or I need a machine with a 20 by 20 getting rid of unwanted light with these modern cameras that literally do see in the dark. Unwanted uh, light in the, in the wrong place can be just as destructive as not having light in the first place. That's my, my trick. I mean, um, I shouldn't really say this, but I've got a little lamppost key that even I on some productions just go up and and uh, and and just turn off Very the lamp. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the things I guess going back to the previous questions that's one of the things that I rely on Mark for is his lamp post key you know, <laughs> yeah, his exactly. skills with a with a fuse box right, yeah yeah <laughs> Gavin, we've got something to say about that. Yeah, I mean, going off from what Job said, I mean, the, you want a big, soft source as far away and as high up as you can get it. Mm. And even better, two of them. And even better, dimmable. I love a Wendy, it's a great source, but by the end of the day, you've lost 50 bulbs usually. And, yes. and you need a big journey. And, yeah. and what I found out with using big tungsten sources outside is they're always too bright. And what's great about big, I'm using 360s outside now, or big, LED sources is you can dial it right down to 20%, 10%, 5%, you know, and, and but it's still a big soft source. And, Are you and using LED sources to replace the 220s or, I mean, it, there's nothing as bright as a Wendy though, is it? I don't want bright. Yeah. yeah. I you want, just want spread. spread. You want spread. So okay. I wait a fire. Or another yeah, thing yeah. I do is, you know, I'll put a, I'll put a, a, a helium balloon yeah. but filled with air and put that on a cherry picker. So oh, in, in, in a cage. Yeah, yeah. Have it in a cage. I know, I know what you mean. I was trying to dim a Wendy the other day yeah. and, they, and the gaffer went, we can't dim it. I went, okay, switch the pods off. But then you end up and with then, small source. And then I, and then I, then I, I look at it and look at it and I go, I've got two pods yeah. on. I've got two pods yeah. on because I just didn't want it yeah. all. It's too much. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then it becomes a lot sharper as well. And it becomes sharper. It does. Whereas if you've got, you know, six 360s or something, Something, yeah. you can you can dim it down to five percent and it's still a big soft source that's what's useful right. but also I think what James was saying was riff off what's there and I don't like big blue backlights in cities because you never see it mm. I, I would rather go off shop windows or street lights yeah. or phones or headlights or tail lights or traffic lights or you know it's great to in a in a in a urban environment you can and you do that beautifully i think you did that in, in a few films where you really pushed the color i think it was yeah. an interesting uh, color separations and you can be really bold at night you don't yeah. have to necessarily be monochrome but actually if yeah if you're in a period setting or in a in a, yeah. in a countryside setting you want a couple of really big soft sources and sometimes a big soft source up high and then uh, you know something through a, a 20 by 20 or 12 by 12 with an egg crate on it as a very soft wraparound fill but probably no more than that and maybe a tiny bit of bounce and you, you've got your light wrapping around mm. um, but you, you also you tend to want it as far back as possible the further away the better otherwise you just it just it looks like a light. And, if, and yeah. if it's appropriate as well, as long as it's appropriate for the story, yeah. a wet down always yes. looks bloody it's marvelous. more value. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and also using smoke as another tool for separation. It's yeah. a, it, smoke it can be brilliant and it can be horrendous because well, it's all about the weather and, and the yeah, rain and course, the wind. Yeah. Unless you can actually get lay flat all, all the way around. around yeah. I mean, then, it's, it's the only way to really do it, isn't yeah. it? It's but with, yeah, with, with lay flat. It, it can add a lot. Yeah. I'm not sure which of the films it was. It may have been terminal, it may have been cats, I suppose I had a similar technique, but yeah, it's looking at the space that you're going to shoot in, so whether, whatever kind of street it is. I'd like a really contrasty image. One of the things that's really difficult to achieve if you like a contrasty image is being fast to shoot in multiple directions and two cameras at once and all that kind of stuff, because what starts as a backlight quickly becomes a front light and all that kind of stuff. I guess in those instances of using colour to building that contrast to if you're ever unlucky and get a, a side light, you've got a red side light and a green backlight or a green edge light and vice versa and putting the contrast in a, in a colour way as well as, but a lot of Blackout was like a, um, a one car Y mm. homage was like to make the city feel really alive, pulsing with colour and to give certain sets a certain hue so as people were walking down the street you'd have chocolate coloured light and a, and a, and a magenta light. And, 
The great painter uh, um, Atkinson Grimshaw, uh -huh. if you've seen his work, oh, it's, uh, for, for a period for, for some 19th century lighting, he's famous for his kind of night lighting scenes, yeah. and, and they're so vibrant, you know, you don't have to go to monochrome in the period films. He painted city scenes with beautiful cyan light off. He always did a wet down <laughs> in his paintings, an amazing golden light coming off gas lit windows, and there was so much colour in it, and it was exciting, you know, I could yeah. suddenly go, oh, I can go full colour here. Yeah, so that was a, a, a little test that I did on for cats as we were using a lot of gaslight or faking gaslight. There's 1,600 gas uh, street lamps still in use still in London. Going, yeah. And they have this incredible green spike on a digital sensor. I used a lot of that. So there was like warm tungsten light coming from houses and the green of the street light, the kind of, you know, dirty griminess. I think also just, Animals. you know, like when you're on the recce, hopefully the director can commit to which way you're looking, you know, yeah. that you're not turning up and you've lit for one direction. Yeah. And then you go, oh, you know, what, actually, I've been thinking, yeah. you are like, oh, my word. So because obviously doing night lighting is expensive because you are trying to get a big source as far away as possible, then being specific about what your frame is. Or have um, two big lights. So, or have two big lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think in my experience, it's always been, I've always thought I needed to have lit more than I thought I did, or the more than was discussed on the recce. So that's something I've kind of mentally noted for future. The only tip I would give, once it's been decided where the location is, is I go by myself, mm -hmm. and I just sit where I think the camera's going to be, or where the director thinks the camera's going to be, and I just literally look at every building for about three hours and see which are the ones that I want to see, which are the ones I don't want to see. And I just make a drawing of all of that, and that becomes the basis of my plan for that night. I think preparation is everything for night yeah. filming, yeah. absolutely everything. If you Because you can't suddenly ask for something around the corner when there's no power. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the first thing, yeah. You can get back to your driven lumps, you but, yeah. Yeah. you know, you need, so often you need permission to put something you know someone's front garden you need permission to do that or you need to you want to light the window in the top of the pub so you've got to know if they've got access to that window in the top of the pub. so all that thing needs to be worked out in advance so i would always go at least a week before that shoot and i'd make all these notes and tech scouting at night as well but that would come after i've had to look at it on my own mm. then yeah I'd, we'd have the text yeah. but the, a, a lot of the time on, well, especially TV drama, you have to really fight for night scouting. So it is very important to go to a location with your gaffer and um, at night and, and really kind of digest what's there and, and preempt those problems. As Phil says, it's all about, purely all about pre-production. There was a scene in The Legend of Zorro where uh, there was a big dance with 400 extras all in Victorian costume in gas lamps. And it was in the middle of nowhere so there were no buildings to put things on. I couldn't quite work out how to do it simply. So for three weeks, because we weren't going to shoot it for three weeks, every night I went there three weeks and I looked, just looked at this field and tried to work out something and eventually I found a solution to it. Yeah. The thing is about the overall light. If you're going to see 400 people, they're not going to have an individual light on them, no, are they? Of course. No, no. So you've got to work out where you're going to get your soft fill from. And in the end, it became a 110 foot crane that was covered in green tarpaulin hidden behind a tree. Mm. And then it had two balloons, which it suspended, which meant that the wider shots I took it up and the closer shots I brought it down. Mm. So, but that took me three weeks to actually finalize that in my head that that was gonna work. And then you go to the gaffer and you say, look, can we do this and then blah, blah, blah. And can they get the crane in that position? That's the other thing. Well, that's it. I mean, locations are yeah. essential because there are all sorts of things that can trigger Well, just you access. Out. You know, is access. it wide enough to get the crane in? And also, there? are you allowed to do it? Are you allowed to put yeah. a light shining down a live street? Because yeah. you may not be. I mean, I was shut down from a location to Buckingham Palace. And St. James's Park, I was going to light up. And we got permission from the, all the authorities and the councils and the palace. You know, we were making sure mum wasn't there, we weren't going to dis dis mm. disturb her evening. It was all worked out, and we had the loadings worked out, because you have to work out the loadings for where you're going to, you know, it might be cellars underneath, where yeah, you want yeah. to put a big bit of plant, so that has to be calculated. And then we were finally shut down by the bats. Yeah. The bats who live in the yeah. trees in St. James's Park yeah. Yeah. are protected, protected and yeah. cannot be disturbed oh. under any circumstances. Yeah. And oh, is your light going to be pointing at that tree? I said, yeah, it's going to be pointing at the park and everywhere. Oh, it can't point at that tree. Uh, the tree is where the bats are nesting. And that was it, we were shut down. Yeah. Also be wary of concessions that are made during conversations on things like tech recce's where it's like you know yeah. what you're saying you're going to look in that we're only going to look this way or we're only going to you know it's like have a 
an A, B, C, D, E, F, G plan for when it's like, oh no, we are going to go up that staircase, or we are going to go around, just, or could we just, or yeah, just you know, the the there's. I'll be careful the, what you say because a lot of times people will come back to you and go, "You said, yeah. I went, well, hang on, I said that then, but you weren't listening to what I said ten minutes later." Yeah, yeah. So you've got to go with your plans to every single person and go. I think this it's is always what we're good, doing. This is what we're doing for yeah. me is to write it down and send it to the location manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you Absolutely. have agreed to clean those windows on the first yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have agreed, so that everybody knows what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Preparation and collaboration is everything. Yeah.